up in here, know what I'm saying? DEA, Southside Players. Big Ben, baby, here we are, season two. Yes, sir. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. What's up? It's uh, Ben Scarborough, and I'm uh, chilling with Pimo at Third Eye Collective in the secret room. What's happening? Season two, it's your boy Pierre Montana from East Atlanta. My guy, Big Ben Scarborough. Yes, yes, yes. Going in for season two. Yes. So, big announcement. Pierre's joining us for the entirety of season two. Uh, as you can see, we got the new intro, right? New graphics. Everybody loves new graphics. You know, me personally, like, I love it when a show redoes the intro because it means that they're, you know, they get they, money. They're going up. They're going up. Everything's brand new around here. Brand new cars, new houses. <laughs> Everything's going up, man. Brand new, man. Yeah, you know, 2020, they th- we thought they had us in the first half, you know what I mean? Woo! You got to be a fighter. You got to be a fighter, man. We're actually sitting in uh, the secret room right now. It's raining outside. Uh, we're, we got Pierre Moe in the hood today, man. He's in the hood like one of them little motorcycles. Yeah, man. So, being uh, what you been up to, man? You know, just uh, honestly. So, what? Uh, yes, uh, the Rich Bazaar episode was the first episode that we'd had since lockdown was lifted, right? And that was really cool. Felt like getting back to work. Um, I didn't really get a chance to talk about the personal development that I underwent. Uh, self-imposed personal development. Read, read a lot of books. You Tell know what I mean? About you, about you getting outside and shit, man. Yeah. You know My boy Ben, he, he, <laughs> he was opposed to the sunlight, but uh, we we've. we've uh, we pushed him to get some vitamin D, and now he just feels like his life is better for it. He's busting big, big cum wads and <laughs> yeah, things like that. The biggest, right? Um, yeah, man, they, uh, they wanted me to go outside, so the kids started going outside. And, uh, man, my life is completely better for it. I found a routine. Can you believe the world had to come this close to being <laughs> shut down <laughs> for me to get into fitness? You know, fitness. I'm, I'm into fitness pizza in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Shit. Fitness. Speaking of that, uh, I just saw that uh, Planet Fitness, a gym of which I am a member of, has lost, like, stock went down 2% uh, for having to tell people in West uh, Virginia that over 200 people were potentially exposed to the coronavirus in one of their gyms uh, after reopening. It's a big stain, actually, on the uh, public image of an otherwise public, you know, gym post-coronavirus. They're the first big nail in the coffin. You know, I've got friends that are going to L.A. Fitness. And they've got the uh, racks, everything super distance apart, you know. Okay, so LA Fitness is doing it right. But people way. are still in there without masks. Okay, okay. I mean, but you know how hard it is working out with a mask on. Like, let's say I'm already not in shape, and I put on something that makes it harder for me to breathe. Fuck it, I'm not going. Yeah, yeah. Some people have to make that concession, I guess. Uh, I think it becomes to to weighing your risk. Like, you that's how- exactly what it is. Like, how healthy are you? It's really what it is about now. Like, if you're high risk you may want to stay inside because this may kill you. You know what I'm saying? And if you're not high risk, just wear a mask so you don't kill somebody who is high risk. Yeah. So, um, you know, there people are in the gym doing squats and they're blowing out. You know, they're shooting germs 300 feet across the room in like yeah. 10 seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, a, it's a really a Petri dish pretty much everywhere we are now. So uh, you've been out to uh, the nightclub scene in Atlanta and you can kind of report on – Maybe what it's like to be mm. in the club and being the only person wearing a mask. I Maybe wouldn't, I wouldn't just spread that rumor like I just go out to the club. I went to a restaurant, <laughs> which I am allowed to go to. That's what I meant. That is a, I guess it doubles as a late night establishment. But uh, I will tell you what I've seen. People are not social distancing. Uh, they are worried about hookahs. Yeah. They want the hookahs and the bottles to come out fast. And... Uh, <laughs> If it gets a little too crowded, you know, I just hold my breath for 15 seconds. That's really the, the vibe that I've been seeing in the club. There's not too many people worried about it. And uh, hopefully Corona just isn't deadly because uh, 33% of Atlanta is going to be out of here. Yeah, so the biggest thing that I've noticed is that Georgia is steady on the list of states that keeps steady climbing like up the... I thought I was going to be able to go to New York because Georgia wasn't on the list at first. But now I'm going to have to self-quarantine. I was going to go for the 4th of July, but I'm probably going to cancel that, man. New Year's trip, New Year's trip plans canceled? I think so, man. I rescheduled. So. Okay, rescheduled. Rescheduled. Uh, I, say we, we, I may just find a way to where I can, uh, you know, uh, quarantine or something like that. Uh, I don't know, man. We, 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 I still have a couple of days because it's on a seven-day rolling window. Oh, uh, okay. I see. So that's so the way the tickets work? No, no, the, uh, that's the way the, quarant- uh, the way New York imposed the quarantine. It's on a seven-day rolling window. Like, oh. Yeah, so many cases per 100,000 or uh, a certain percentage. 
in your state where you come from, they want you to do a 14 day quarantine when you arrive in New York. But uh, it's 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 voluntary, but it's like not voluntary. I'm like, which one is it? You know okay. A lot of people may not know this about Pierre, but he's a world traveler. He goes places. You can check his profile picture album for the proof. And this New York trip has put a quite, you know, like I can tell that's not just, there's a damper on this man right now. You know, he's, he, he's not the type of guy that gets stuck in G8, you know. I've already been here since the, the start of Corona. So you can tell the amount of stress I'm under. Like I've been seeing, you know, saying uh, just the same thing for the last several months and it hurts my heart i was going to new york on the fourth just you know uh my fr my friend just moved up there got a new spot in bushwick i was like hey man fuck it i'm gonna come to the brownstone and here goes fucking corona peeking her head back i I'm, i've canceled canceled three trips due to corona i was supposed to go uh to columbia in early march go do some cocaine down there you know mm -hmm. medellin you know what i'm saying the Meet best some, some women you know if you're in Rome, you're going to eat fucking pizza, right? <laughs> I mean, you know. It's fucking exactly. So then I missed that. Then Puerto Rico, I was supposed to go be having a back, back shot mania on the balcony. That's right. In Puerto Rico. And fucking that shit gets canceled. I'm like, I can't. I, nothing's going to. Corona. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy that changes his profile picture to update the weather. I can't have a winter profile pic in the summer. So I go do shit in the summer that's worth this profile. You know what I'm saying? It's profile worthy. You know what I mean? I should be in a pool right now. You know what I'm saying? Hitting, hitting somebody's mom. You know what I'm saying? On a balcony. Yeah. You know, with good retirement money. You know? Oh, yeah. You know, just we just out here just living the time of our lives. What about 2019? Was that a big travel year for you? 2019. 2019. I went crazy 2019. What, what was going on? Where'd you go? Some uh, notable places. Mm, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you a couple. Uh, first, I think at the start of the year, probably we went to Salt Lake City. You no know, snowmobile. Oh, the, damn. Did Sundance. Uh, dog sled it. You know, you know, just all, all the winter shit you can do. Yeah. We went out there, did it. Had a great time. Went with like 13 of my friends. Rented a big ass house. Oh, sick. Yeah, man. Real good time. Had a real 15 passenger van going up to skiing and snowboarding. Now, skiing and snowboarding is something that you might not think is Lit. that physically exhausting. Oh, uh Lord Jesus. Have you ever had to pick yourself up from falling on a mm -hmm. snowboard? Yes, yes. So you know what that's like. Yes, yes. You have to, use, you have to move both. It's really just your <laughs> it's, core. It's, it's really attached just, to your feet. Yeah. So you think you use one foot at a time to get yourself up now, <sighs> and that may be a little hard. But think about trying to throw both your feet up at the same time and hopping up to do some shit. I see, yeah. It's fucking horrible. I played a few snowboarding video games, and then I actually went and tried it myself. And so yes. I, uh, I definitely fell. Okay. But I also succeeded. I made it down to the bottom of the hill. Okay, yeah, I quit. I definitely quit. Yeah. I said, yeah, this is Tapped it. out. It's not for me. I'm tired. <laughs> uh, Too many crunches. Just training and shit. I said, all right, fella, I should have probably skied. I should have. Now, how do you like the skis? I didn't try skiing. Oh, okay, you just said nah. I, yeah, I thought I was cool enough to snowboard, and I'm not. I what am. about snowmobile? I am a snowmobile pro. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I am a snowmobile pro. I will donuts. I will come. Yeah. I will come off the hot, the little, the little lifts. I will do jumps. <laughs> yeah, I am a snowmobile pro, dude. I am really one. All right, this what happened on the snowmobile. Uh, the instructor, he had like the fastest one, like the fastest snowmobile. But my snowmobile was was malfunctioning. I told him, take me back or get me a new snowmobile. He's like, fuck it, you can just have mine. Oh, nice. I took his. I left a fucking group. Oh wow! Going like eighty in a snowmobile. Damn! So it was like a big open field, maybe. Uh, this was a straightaway, but then we had oh yeah, on open field, open field. I was out there just doing donuts all through the middle of the shit. Everybody like, hey, let me see yours. I'm like, <laughs> no, no, no. There's only a few times in life when luck can favor you in yeah. such a way where you get the instructor's snowmobile, right? <laughs> What about the ski do situation and the uh, the one different tropical? Do you go you ride the? Uh... I, I actually don't ride jet skis, but uh, I've never I say I've never tried to jet ski. Like people uh, people to keep telling me, but I'm I'm like, what if I fall off? I don't. You're I don't, a great swimmer. I am a great swimmer. <laughs> I am a great swimmer. I swam 500 yards on Yacht Week because uh, I got I was on a floaty and it took me away from the boat. Mm -hmm. Yacht Week, that Croatia, somewhere else I went in 2019, man. That was crazy, too, man. That was a wild time, like a week full of fucking parties. Some of the best shit, best shit you can do in your life. Like, you, you go out there with a group of good friends. You're going to meet good friends, probably people you're going to talk to to this day. I'm actually actually meeting one of my friends from uh, Yacht Week in New York. So, yeah, that's it. Nice. And um, how do you 
deal with the fact that people stop you on the street in complete amazement when they see you and for the first time in person i mean your 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 instagram profile your social media profile is just in general they're so prolific like i would go so far as to say that pierre right here is an influencer <laughs> like and very much so wow man this the engagement his posts receive are just like and you know they're honest the replies he asks the hard questions I mean, it got to the point where Pierre was, like, sponsoring Brazilian wax uh, giveaways. Like, Oh, you're, you're referring to the Pimo Brazilian Wax Scholarship. That's what it was. It was a scholarship, right? The Pimo Brazilian Wax Scholarship. Yes, okay. Uh, all right, I, I have a couple of jobs. And one of my jobs, I just decided to give away uh, my entire check in Brazilian waxes. So uh, I do that from time to time on Facebook or Twitter. <laughs> so you can pick a number of 1 through 100 and... Win a free Brazilian wax from your favorite uh, Brazilian wax place. I have a. I probably have some other scholarships coming soon, though. I'm really just trying to <laughs> rack my brain to think. Yeah. That the, I just want to show the ladies I support them. You know what I'm saying? So it's just little things I can do like that, just for them, man. I mean, so what is the correlation between good pussy and a check engine light on her car? Like, what 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 is that? Is, is there a pattern there? Uh, yeah, man. It's a. It's just science, really. It's more hood science, though. It's like a Negro Domus or something like that. He uh, he came up with this. It's just a, it's a scientific method. An Altima check engine light, good pussy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so di different boxes you check off. Check engine light is always. It's, it's just a constant, though. Like you know what I mean? So uh, so you fellas, if the check engine lights on. Check out that pussy. That pussy is fire. But also, like, Check when you shoot your shot, do you do it on the timeline or do you do it in the DM? See, me, me, uh, it's bold. Like, okay, I, I'll probably shoot it on the timeline. If, if they respond to it on the timeline, then you know the DMs are good. You know what I'm saying? If you're just shooting boldly in DMs, you're like, you're, you're shooting blindly. You know what I mean? Nobody, she, she might, she may or may not respond, but. You get some love on the timeline, you'll definitely get love. I won't say 100%. Let's say 80% of the time you get some love in the DM. What about, like, communicating in person? Is that the best? Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't like talking on the phone. I, I'm trying to set up dates. If, you, you, if we talk, like, I'm trying to go somewhere. Like, I'm trying to I'm trying to link with you. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, what you doing today? Shit, let's go. Let's go get some drinks. Let's go get something to eat. Shit, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to do something. I'm not trying to sit here and talk on the phone. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, what you did today? Da, da, da. I'm like, shit, this is boring. All right. Right. Pierre's the kind of guy that would rather have a threesome uh, over a PS5 any day, basically. That is definitely true. 100 times, a yeah, 100 times out of 100 times, I will take a threesome over a PS5, and you can quote me on that. Have you ever had to tell someone that their pussy wasn't good? I would never tell a woman that her pussy wasn't good. I would just not fuck that woman again. There's no reason for me to be... Women will tell you your dick is bad. Women will hurt your feelings. Oh, I dig one the best today. I said, well, bitch, your pussy has been the same every time. I had nothing to say about it. Well, okay. All right. <laughs> I'll take this dick elsewhere. <clears throat> Have you ever been on a date with a chick and she, like, pays for the date and then gives you some pussy, like, on the first date? Never on the first date, no. this I've never just been taken out and wined and died and then fucked and left. Uh, I, it's, it's on my bucket list, but I, it hasn't has it happened. No, because quite yet. I, I I heard that you know if you if you have a one night stand and you accidentally come inside of her, then you need to leave the abortion money under her pillow, right? Like kind of like a like an abortion fear. Yeah, like an abortion fear. Yes, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely, <laughs> it's customary, right? You know what I'm saying, fellas? Leave a little Plan B money under there if you know you, you know you messed up. You know what I'm saying? You might want to make sure she knows that's what it's for. Like here's. Forty dollars for you and sixty for a Plan B. It's it's a hundred. <laughs> oh, Pierre, out here breaking hearts and stealing identities. Whoa! <laughs> she breaks my heart. I will steal her identity. So, did you take place in any of the um, <clears throat> the looting that was going on recently? No, sir. Did you see anybody with some larger shoes than they would normally buy because I maybe wish, they got there hey, late? If you have those Rolexes, hit me. I mean, what's the only time that you'll actually go out of your way, you know, to get some pussy, dude? Um, if I know it's going to make me crazy, I, I want, that's the type of pussy I want. I want pussy that's going to change my life. Every woman, oh, you're going to be stalking me? I'll be like, mm, let's, 
Give it to me first, then let let me decide on the stock. Don't tell me you have stalker stalker grade pussy. Then when I get it and I'm disappointed, you've hyped you hyped this up too high. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I just want let me let me be the judge. I'm like, okay, all right, bitch, I'll be back. Um, have you ever gotten high with somebody and then just busted out laughing because they're ugly as fuck? <laughs> That's funny. Actually, strap was telling me that you have had like a history with promotions, like club promotions, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I you said yeah. you were at Libra doing Gucci shows, like, back in the day, right? I was just saying, it wasn't really Gucci shows. It was a party called Wasted Wednesday uh, yeah, at, at the Libra. We started at A-Town East mm-hmm. over off Memorial, then moved, moved to the Libra. <clears throat> it, was one of, it was one of the biggest parties of the era, man. You said you know everybody on the East Side. Uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I, to talk. I mean, you know, the East Side, we're a close-knit family, so you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you're from the East Side, yeah, we, we probably ran across each other some shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, I'd dab you down or whatever, but you know, it's really just uh from East Lake to the Chap. <laughs> a little farther shit. You know what I'm saying? I know I I'm, I'm a lot on you, you know, so I know I I'm from Glenwood, you know, uh been been around, man. I've been around. Uh yeah, man. What's the biggest party you've ever thrown back in the day? The biggest party? Uh probably yeah, probably a Waste of Wednesday Christmas reunion or something like that. Nice. Uh, uh one of those. Uh, I think uh I think we had Nicki Minaj at Echelon one time. Yo Gotti at Wasted Wednesday. You know, uh, cool. It's been it's been some. You know, what what's Vision sitting like? Vision's oh, is yeah, open, yeah. right? Vision's on Fridays, man. Right there in Buckhead, the old Anchor Bar. Come through, get a section, get a bottle. Shout out my boy Red Push. You know, it's going down out there. Uh, my boy Red, he doing his thing out there. Him and him, some other fellows. They got some uh, some good shit going on Fridays. I went out there last Friday. It was a uh, even amidst the corona, it was st- yeah. still still had a nice, you know, a nice crowd. You know what I mean? Like a, every section full, nice women, nice, you know. Did you feel safe? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, sometimes it's not about the coronavirus. You just have to wear a mask because you're ugly as shit. There's a lot of people just relishing in this uh, neck down time, so. What are your opinions about the, the potential second wave? That might hit the city. Oh, it's forces com- back indoors. Oh, Corona's coming back. Yeah, Corona is. Do you coming think people back. are planning for Corona to come back? Like they're yes, getting out we now. Are trying they're... to get out these last week, last two weeks, because we know they're gonna shut the shit back down. Sucks, man. They should have just kept it shut down the first time. I know. There's something wrong with the leadership in this state. <laughs> this state, the next state, <laughs> the next state over from that. It's not what you think leaders would do. You'd be like, okay. Virus, virus finna hit hit the streets again. Talking about, um, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Cove. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> C to the O V. Yeah, it, it was actually it was pretty easy to hibernate in the city. Like get some get some. I actually caught up on some rest when when the lockdown happened. That was that was really cool. There was no traffic, man. It was, mm-hmm. it was, it was cool. Uh, I actually rode my bike up Peachtree at five o'clock one day, and it it felt like a zombie movie. It was it was the trippiest thing I've ever done, in in on Peachtree Street. You know, normally it's just yeah, 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 the right, yeah. What's the farthest you ever rode your bike? So I took off from Third Eye and I bolted up Piedmont until like past the park, and I think it was it was thirty five miles. That's right. Was, You've ridden your bike thirty five miles. Yeah, in in like one day, it was an intense day. Were you running from someone? No, I just kept going, and actually my. Tire popped on the way home. You should have. You rolled 35 miles on a bicycle. Yeah, yeah. these tires are kind of like run flattish. You know, they're very thin they're, and they're meant for like tracks. And yeah, I, I was on the sidewalk and I just was, you know, I was turned. You know, it was like. So did you walk the bike home after? I did. It was a two mile walk. Wow. I had to hoist it up over my shoulder and just walk. Wow. So you really went Iron Man that day. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, 30 you know, mile bike ride. You know, and I. Six mile swim. Yeah. I alternate coconut but coconut um, oil and sunscreen, and so I, I had my shirt off walking the bike up, and I was getting, like, the super tan. You know, I was experimenting with all different types of outside things that people do during lockdown. This, this is the most tan you've ever been. Huh? It is. It is. And it, it's only getting better. It's been kind of raining, actually, a few. You know, I haven't been able to get on the bike as much, but, yeah, that's just me. <laughs> Uh, we actually, for, for fans of the show who've made it this far, Pierre and I wanted to let you guys know that we're actually working on getting a new table as a part of like updating the set here, you know, the introduction of the episode. Like we told y'all everything's new. Yeah. Boom. New table. We're getting a new set. We'll have all this 
by episode five. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be pretty cool because we'll be able to have more people on it at, at, at once. Season two, season two, baby. Yes, sir, Ben. There's just something about uh, the second season. Season two, <laughs> again, better, bigger, more explosions. Drop some right there when I do that. Yeah, more, more explosions. <laughs> yeah, more vaporwave. I'm I'm really uh, stoked to see that this bar in Stone Mountain just opened up called Outrun Brewing Company. Uh, they, I feel like they were gonna have their grand opening. Shout out to you guys. I'm gonna come check you out and do a vlog up there. Uh, they have an Outrun and an Outrun Two. They actually bought Joysticks Outrun, so I gotta go check it out. Oh, okay, okay. But uh, they're they're like a vaporwave themed. 80s themed retro neon signs everywhere. Have you been to the VR bar here in Atlanta? Yeah, Reverie. Reverie? Yeah, I checked it out. That's it's really cool. Um, for guys, if you get looking for a cool bar to go to in Atlanta, Reverie, it's like right on the corner of a uh, Boulevard and Ponce, I want to say, or North yeah, yeah, North yeah, Avenue, yeah, maybe. Yeah, like a uh, yeah, yeah, Boulevard and Ponce, right, yeah. there, right there behind the shell. And and so they've there's <laughs> God. Love Reverie, but I think the dance floor is a little close to the uh, male restroom. I've had some very interesting <laughs> encounters uh, while I was dancing, some interesting smells, but they have a cool color palette in there. They've got the, the VR headsets that are all kind of like in a section, so you get a section, you get the VR headset, and I mean, it is a, it would be a coronavirus breeding ground right now, so I'm sure they're you know like hurting pretty badly, but I've seen uh, some pretty cool drunk people playing uh, virtual reality games like Beat Saber. You know, what's your what's your favorite uh, what's your favorite bar in the city? My favorite bar in the city right now is probably uh, Elliott Street Pub, which is uh, across the street from the Mercedes Benz Stadium. Oh, uh, the, the the red. I know what you mean on, on the corner. Yeah. yeah. Are they? they uh, OK. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been there before. I think I got a, I got you a room from there before. Yeah. There's a basement that's a venue and then there's some offices upstairs. I haven't been upstairs, but yeah, it's just close enough. It's in bike riding distance. Uh, they just have a cool, cool vibe. And then, you know, you can sit out on the porch and like look at the stadium, get a nice big up close view of it, you know, at night. Because if you were, you know, they're, they're not letting you on at the Mercedes Benz Stadium mm -hmm. at night like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd probably say my, my favorite bar in the city probably right now is uh, Spin on Peter Street. Get you a nice little slice of pizza, some good drinks. Then my, my boy DJ is there on, on Sundays, DJ Pretty Boy Tank. So it's, it's a real, real, real cool vibe, man. I, I tell you, if you're in the city on, some, on a, Sunday slide through there, man. Get you a couple of drinks. Tell them Pimo sent you. What kind of restaurants you been to lately? You been anywhere good? Well, I uh, said not during Corona. I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't been able to get to anything, man. I have had Hattie's, Hattie B's before. Today I had Hattie B's, so I wonder if that counts, right? What do you think? I mean, I ate it at home. I'm like, yeah, Hattie B's is cool. Hattie B's is cool. I, I did physically travel to go to Hot Dog Pete's, which just opened up by the the Georgia Tech football stadium mm -hmm. uh, over on Hank Aaron. Okay, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Across the street from Hank Aaron right there on Georgia the Georgia State. Yeah, right right across the street is uh Hot Dog Pete's and they were they were taxing on the hot dogs, man. Them I can't I can't shits were not that big. Can't pay a lot for a hot dog. I'm sorry. It's just But it was cool. They had a cool menu, you know, like everything on the menu was like a dick joke, you know, and so it was like funny to sit there and order your hot dog and there were like families in there talking about let me get a big weenie and all this shit. So it was like sausage party. Yeah. Just like, in real life. Yeah, but there were some players in the building. There were some people sitting down that were like big, big business people, that, you know, that were trying to get in there for the grand opening like early enough in the day. Mm -hmm. Rode my bike down there on my way to grant park i've been ra uh, lapping grant park <laughs> okay <laughs> big shit popping all right big Little shit stopping you know i've gotten that my whole life by the way you know as far as nicknames go people have been calling me big ben it's because of the clock <laughs> my whole fucking life because of the clock you, you just thought people thought you were big or ben. ben franklin like those might be the two <laughs> biggest you know auto automatics ben frank big ben yeah it's, it's, it's easy it, well-known things yeah, it's easy. Uh, how, how was uh, everything uh, after the Pure Born tag kind of hit, started hitting rap songs and stuff? Did people start, you know, did you get that? I'm sure you got that a lot, right? It's disgusting. Yeah, Pierre is. Uh, it's You've a, seen it. it. Yeah, I have. You, you know, see, people just, yo, Pierre. <laughs> Why, thank you, Pierre Born, for bringing this Jamie Foxx tagline back to the masses so they can yell it at us. <laughs> yo, Pierre, you want to come out? No, no, I, I don't. <laughs> No, I'm I'm good. I'm going to stay right where I'm at because you guys won't stop yelling this foolishness. Oh, also, we just uh, launched a new Instagram page. The it's called TEC Studios, and yeah, it's we're we're promoting it right now. It's uh, Third Eye Collective just started a new Instagram, so go ahead and if you if you aren't following if you aren't follow. following now, follow me at Pierre Montana. 
Follow my boy underscore Ben underscore Ben Scar. Yes, we are on Instagram. IG, Twitter. Follow me, Wrist Flick Pimo. Yeah. What's your Twitter? Uh, I'm I'm a underscore Ben Scar as well on Twitter. Underscore Ben Scar on Twitter, and then follow the Third Eye Collective page on Instagram at Third Eye Collective. And then uh, what, any other Instagrams or Twitters we get. I mean, it's it's worth following us because we post when the shows come out. Like, I know you see little tidbits of these episodes here and there, and you're like, when the hell does this shit come out? It's, you know, like, you can follow us because this, you know, we'll let you know. I will definitely let you know. Also, you can follow my taco cart at Barrio Tacos and Ramen. We do pop-up shops all around the city of Atlanta. Come get you a taco when you see us posting about the pop-up shop. Did you see the Pop Smoke album art that came out that's being dragged on Twitter right now? No. Yeah, so they paid Virgil, like, $50 in Photoshop to make, and you know the album art for Pop Smoke's album and like Fifty Cent like passed out passed on it and it looks like trash. I'm gonna throw it up on the screen right now. Look at this. It's like it's got the barbed wires from Post Malone's beer bongs and Bentleys and it's got like the diamond graphic from Future and Drake. What a time to be alive! Like mashed up, you know, like, like yeah. I gotta show it to you actually well, since we're here, so you can comment on it. So yeah, that's the Pop Smoke LP. You know, Rush Gob. That'll be all over Apple Music and shit like that. What do you think about that? It's terrible, right? Shit looks like a sixth grader made this in Photoshop. Yeah, and and what's so crazy is like the first picture that pops up when you Google Pop Smoke, he like took that picture. You know what I'm saying? Like almost zero effort was spent. All right, guys, send me a pic. Okay, fuck this. What y'all want me to do? I'll get one my fucking self. Yeah, main takeaways is that, you know, we are getting the new table for the show. Pierre's going to be on here, like, every time now. So, you know, reach out to him, uh, obviously, if you would like to get on the show for an interview. You know, that's something we really don't say on the air very much. We kind of, like, chalk it up to our uh, ad copy that we have surrounding the show itself, like, in our uh, Instagram bio, for example. Um, you can reach out to me or Pierre to come on the show. Like if you're, if you, if you're trying to fly into the city or if you're around here and you caught the episode on one of our social medias, like definitely reach out. This is something we do all the time. We could definitely get you in. We'll clear the schedule for you. It's podcast season. It's big factuals. Now, Pierre and I are going to get out of here and go smoke a L. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. Go ahead and follow us on social media for the drop and, uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.